calibrate the speedometer to the actual running of the wheels. And we're taking it up to 30 mile an hour, 50 mile an hour, 60 mile an hour. Welcome to sunny Somerset in the middle of a summer heat wave. This is Minehead, a bucket and spades sort of town with all the attractions of the English seaside. Fish, chips and ice cream, old fellas in straw hats, socks and sandals. Gracing the seafront esplanade is a traditional English seaside hotel. Jolly window boxes and Nell, the friendly dog. Only Foxes is a hotel with a difference. Nearly all the 60 staff have learning disabilities. Most of the time, things run pretty smoothly. But occasionally, there's rumpuses. There's rows. And there's reprimands. Look, I really mean this now. You go into my kitchen to learn. Keep your love lives out of my kitchen, yeah? Welcome to the summer season at the strangest hotel in Britain. Fox's Hotel, the staff are students who spend three years here learning the hotel trade. This is Sophie, her first year. This term she's on duty in the kitchen, helping prepare meals for the hotel guests. Right, all we need is to get a milk spoon without holes this time. OK, God, don't you. Sophie, where to start? Completely in your face, yeah. Um, completely off the wall. No talking to you, fuck. You're not talking to me. You did a fuck, You let me go, fuck. The fact that she is so in your face—that's that's what's so challenging about it. And she, she wanders off whenever she wants. She does what Sophie does what Sophie wants to do. Completely. And she winds people around her little finger half the time. I mean like that she really does. Excuse me, don't I like your little kitty. So we get some tea towels. Martin wants his tea towels, but Sophie is still very much learning the fox's way. This can have its frustrations for her kitchen colleagues. She gets distracted. She goes off with all the will in the world to go get the tea towels. If she sees something interesting or exciting or something, she goes off with that. Foxes celebrates its students' achievements. Every year, another 16 graduate, and the hotel walls are lined with photos of award ceremonies. This is excellent news for Sophie. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Damn. There's a three-course lunch to prepare, but you wouldn't know it. Skyping. <laughs> and she wants us to believe. Exactly, yes, yeah. Fifteen minutes later, mission accomplished. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Fox's 52 students rotate each term through housekeeping, dining room, and kitchen duties. Right, we've got the RAF for lunch, approximately 20 people, yeah? The hotel was set up 10 years ago by Maureen Tyler Moore and Sue Jenkins, the hinge and bracket of special needs. Whoever it is who organises our lives from above, uh, whatever you want to call him, God or whatever, 
they had decided that something like we do was needed and they had a look around and they saw these two silly old bats down there and they said they'll do right. and, and they just made us do it. Well having a, <laughs> having a menopause helped. <laughs> Foxes is the only residential training hotel for people with learning disabilities in the country. They work very hard. It is not a place to come for a, like a holiday camp. And it's a, a huge shock to a lot of them. Before, when they've been, if they've been living at home, mm. um, with all the, for all the best reasons in the world, a lot gets done for them. And then they have to suddenly go and do it all for themselves and do a job and learn. I mean, it's, it's really quite something. They do, Takes they it do out of well. them. They when they first start training, they do about an hour, and they're tired. They can't do any more. <laughs> Every year, 900 guests come to Minehead to stay at Fox's. This is Tom. He's come to spend a week in the sea air. Like many of Fox's guests, Tom has his own learning disabilities. Tom is a fox's old boy who graduated five years ago. Now he checks in like any other guest. Would you like to welcome Mr. Rose? Try to sign in. Did you have a good trip? Yes, thank you. That's good. Have you eaten? Uh, I haven't eaten. You no. haven't eaten. Are you starving hungry? Yes. Right, well, we we'll take. Francis will take you up to your room. Yes. And then you, if you'd like to come down to the dining room. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll give you some supper. Yes, okay. all right. Okay. Francis, if you'd like to take Francis to the box club. I will. That's all set up. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Right this way. Box club is here. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Ah. Under the watchful eye of Fox's madames, Tom tucks into some late night dinner. Mmm, this is good. Mm. Good lasagna. Thank you, Tom. Mm. Mm. Oh, my facial hair. <laughs> the food gets into it, but. I like this style I have, this sort of Victorian look. When I was doing waitering, we had to wear bow ties. You probably quite like that though, didn't you? Yes. Don't you have a bit of a tie collection? Yes, I do. Ah, I've actually brought one with me to wear sometime. 70s bow tie. Now, isn't that what you call 70s? Welcome to Fox's Hotel in Minehead, a unique training hotel where people with learning disabilities are trained for work in the catering trade. This can sometimes get a bit messy. Martin's been a Fox's chef for five years. Today he's coaching Stuart in the finer points of a bacon and egg breakfast. Next door, Tom enjoys his first Fox's breakfast as a guest. He used to be doing the waiting, now he can sit back and do the eating. Put your fried egg on the plate, fried bread on it. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, sorry. Today, Tom and some other guests are off on a fox's day trip. He's donned his black watch tartan blazer for the occasion. Hmm. I wouldn't mind marrying a girl from Hawaii. Hmm. A nice Polynesian girl. Oh. Yes. Right. Then she could do. Then she could do the 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 Hawaiian dancing. Oh, yeah, I love that. Going bow, bow, wow, 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 wow. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Back at Fox's, there's the post breakfast lull. This is the chance for students to catch up and chat. 
but if the staff aren't on their toes, a lull can become an eternity. Breakfast time's over now, isn't it? So you've got two minutes to eat your breakfast and then come back to the kitchen, OK? See your idea, Dave, mate. Yeah, two minutes. Right. This is what we need. Two minutes. Thank you. Two minutes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Deal. Deal. Good. <laughs> there's Fox's time, and then there's Sophie time. You have one minute. You have one minute back. Okay. All right. Hey, do that. Because I tell you what, you've got to do. You've got to put your rolls in the oven. Oh boy. So hurry up. Come on. No, 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 Okay. Yeah, because your rolls are going to be ruined if you don't let you put no, them in. No, 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 no. This is fine. One minute. One minute, OK? Yeah, OK. Right, it's one nice. minute. That's my mutton. Yeah, of course. See? <laughs> hey. There's potatoes to be peeled for lunch. There's buns to be baked. But there's marmite to be eaten. 90 miles away, Sophie's parents are having a rather more anxious time. I think you've got to be realistic. Um, so, I mean, I'm delighted that she's making the progress she is. And, you know, let's see what, what the next two years bring. I'm really worried that I've set her up to fail because I know it's going to be very, very, very demanding. Um, there's, it's the work ethic thing. Um, you know, they have to be ready, they have to be punctual, they have to get up, they have to have a certain amount of independence. And I'm worried that there are things I'm aspiring for for Sophie, but I'm not being realistic. By half ten, the hotel is a hive of activity. Look, got brown bits all over. Yeah. That's what we're trying to stop. Fox's aims to make students more disciplined in their timekeeping and their work rate, so they can fit into jobs in the outside world when they graduate. But Sophie's a first year and is still inclined to wander. The buns remain unbaked, Sophie's gone AWOL and Martin has a hunt on his hands. Sophie! <laughs> Chef Sara has an inkling where Sophie might be. The smallest room, the safest refuge. Go on, Soph. Quick, cos we've got to finish the bread off and get it in the oven. Come on. We've got to go check your bread that's in the oven. Well, I haven't got a minute, Sophie. Come on. By the time Sophie emerges, the head chef is on shift. Come on, you. Come on. Otherwise, you're going to get anything done. Go on after you. Come on. Try to do it again. And which floor are you talking to? Me? Yes, you. Right, come on, let's get on. No, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, I accept your apology, but it's got to stop. Come on, let's go. Yeah, let's go and get it. No, 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 I agree. Let's, but, yeah, I accept, uh, yeah, I accept listen, your apology, but you've got right, to get listen, on. Next week, if this carries on, we're not baking any bread. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, now go to the right, kitchen right. and go help them clean the kitchen. Bread. Go help them clean the kitchen then. Come on. Come on. Let's go help clean the kitchen. Come on, go girl. Oh, I hate to be the kitchen anymore. Right, oh, you go help clean the kitchen, then we'll sort out the bread next week. If you behave. Come on, clean this table. No, yes. no, yes. Phil has spent 35 years in catering, but students like Sophie have forced him to moderate his ways. I've had to change my total life around because I can't swear at them, I can't batter them, I can't burn them, I can't kill them. Yeah? So when I, worked, when I first walked in here, I would have been always in trouble. I don't think I'd have a job today. <laughs> Honestly, you know, so I've had to turn that all around. Yeah. Because you don't, you don't chat at them ever, do you? It's not. Now and again, when they've been really silly, or they need to kick up the backside. The Fox's minibus has dropped the guests off at the theme park, and Tom is raring to go. <laughs> the dinosaurs. Ah, David Attenborough. <laughs> Inside this wonderful park, this is where the dinosaurs live. 
<laughs> Tom's tour of world cultures begins in Egypt. Undeterred by his Egyptian experience, Tom acquaints himself with Hindu deities. Um. Oh, I don't know why I got the hold on this. Um. And then the grand finale, a Wild West water ride. <laughs> It's been a grand day out for Tom, though you get the feeling he's enjoying it rather more than his friend. <laughs> On the surface, it's all perfectly well ordered at Fox's. There's tables set and waiting for dinner at six sharp. French onion soup with chicken supreme to follow. But any hotel has its upstairs, downstairs soap operas. Outside, the staff are on afternoon meal break. And beneath the colour-coded fox's uniforms, unruly passions are seething in the sea air. Daniel, from kitchen staff, has got an eye on Michelle from waitressing. Is it where my gorgeous girl? Oh, darling. All right. But there's a problem. The problem is called Ben, and he and Michelle are already an item. Yes. But Dan has a plan. Pay us who out. When? No, it's Today. Now. You're going to do what you have done. I will. When? Today. What time? Um, I say fit of work. Never tell her. The Dan Ben Michelle triangle is becoming a bit of an issue when all three of them are together on the same shift. Wherever you find Michelle, you find Dan in suspiciously close proximity. This isn't doing much for the kitchen skills Dan is supposed to be learning. He's mooning about, getting in the way of the horseradish. The thing is, he never actually plucks up the courage to come straight out with it. So, he's written Michelle a note. If you were Ben, you could be forgiven for getting a bit hacked off with this sort of carry-on. There's your girlfriend. And there's some bloke hanging round waiting to give her a love letter. Either way, Dan's mind is completely off the job. And it's not as if Michelle is that keen anyway. I don't want it. I don't want it. I'm not talking to him. I'm not. The rivals conduct themselves with intense politeness. Pay me. Excuse me, Dad. Pay me, Ben. Excuse me, Dad. The guests are happily oblivious to the kitchen drama. The sweet trolley is out. Tom's time at Fox's was well spent. He now has the skills to live independently and help out in his local cafe. Do you wish you were still a student here? Um, no. Why? Um, I'm happy how I am now. Not as a guest. I like being a guest. Old habits learned at Fox's die hard. A long period from oh. to I was just, I, I, I shouldn't do that anymore. It's not my responsibility. This isn't level. There. Tom has fond memories of his kitchen days too. Yes. 
happy days at Fox's Academy. Remember that then, do you? That's brought back memories. Many of Fox's guests come with organised parties. There's a lot of people with physical or learning disabilities and there's a fair sprinkling of parents of students. Some people just like it here. Fox's guests know the setup and enjoy Fox's difference. It wasn't always so. We had a, a lady who was here on, a, on a, a Christian week. She was down in the, in the dining room loudly saying that um, these sort of people ought to be kept away from everybody and really they should be out in the countryside. Where so she threw her out? So I asked her to leave. Absolutely horrified, but... Uh, this is a Christian? Yeah. Oh, oh yes, it is. Bless them. Behind the scenes, Ben's mind is still not on the job. Come on, hurry up, Ben. You just have to be quicker than that, don't you? You have to rush around a bit sometimes. If you go as slow as you go, we'll never have lunch in time. Right, all done, Dan? Have you swept out there? You sure? Shall I check? Yeah, please. Okay, then. And Dan's cleaning is under scrutiny too. Right. What about this down here? Can't miss that, can you? It's enormous. And down there, look. Come on. What? You know we call you back every time and do, to do it again. Why don't you do it right the first time, then we won't keep calling you back? Well, doesn't that make sense? Head chef Phil is completely unaware of the tension seething in the background. He tries to get Ben back on track. You've got to listen, yeah? Right? Do you want a nice job, job when you finish at Fox's? Yeah. Yeah? Do you want a nice little flat of your own? Well, if you, if you start to listen, you'll learn and do it properly, and then it might happen. But if you go into the big outside world and you don't listen, yeah, you won't have a job. No job, no money. Come on, let's start to listen. Because you can do. But during one of the regular student assessments, the letter business unfolds. So we're right there? Yep. All right. I've written, Ben is putting into practice health and safety as learnt. His nice skills are improving with each session. Thank you. Thank you. What's wrong? Baby. Nothing. Who's upset you? Ben. Why, why is Ben upset you? For a letter. A letter? I have to write a bit, right? I'll make it for myself. So it was your letter he threw in the bin? No, Ben did. What, a written letter? Yes. And it was yours? Yeah, it's mine. So how did Ben get it then? I gave it to Ben. You gave it to Ben? I gave it for myself. No. So you put this letter in the bin? Yes. Why? Um. I have no one done with that letter for me, so it's my girlfriend. Well, here we, see, here we go, you see. Now, um, you're meant to be working, aren't we? Keep your love lives and your personal disagreements out of my kitchen, yeah? And it's got... Ah, don't point. Right, look, I really mean this now. You come into my kitchen to learn. Yes. Yeah? What you do outside girlfriends and whatever else, I do not want to know. Have we got that? Yes, yeah, It stays out there. I don't want it in here. Yeah. What we really talk about is work, isn't it? Yes. Right, let's keep it that Thank way. Thank you, girl, All right? Yeah. Right. Bye-bye. OK, agree? Yeah, I'll Come here, down. Mr. Saxton. Mr. Saxton, come here. Ah. Do you agree? I'll give up. Yeah, do you agree? No, I don't want to be my downstairs. You don't agree? No. Because it ain't coming in my kitchen, it stays out. Yeah, I'm not so, we're, it. so we anyway. agree. This is a pretty common scenario at Fox's. For most of the students, it's their first time away from home and they have to start learning how to deal with that dread thing, relationships. It's Tom's last evening at Fox's. Time for a bit of singing and dancing.
Channel 4 Documentaries, sponsored by Honda. It's six weeks into the summer term at Fox's Hotel. This is one of the seven houses where the students at Fox's Training Hotel are billeted. They're all called Fox's This and Fox's That. Fox's Earth is home to Sophie, a first year student with a problem with timekeeping. Sophie. Morning. It's 6.30 and Sophie really should be up and getting ready for work. Yes, honey. Yes. Work. Yes, honey. Be quick then, OK? Yes. OK. In their three years here, the students must learn to live independently. It's part of the staff's job to make sure that they can cope. And to clean your glasses as well. If you go and get me a paper towel, a wet one, yeah. and a dry one, and we'll do your glasses for you. Yeah. One wet and one dry. Yeah. Come on. Dave, are you sure they're your trousers? I don't think they are because they're too short. Yeah. Dave? Behind the door of bedroom one, it's still worryingly quiet. You want to get up then? Hmm? Yes, no. Come on, Sophie, we'll go to work. OK. At Fox's, learning isn't nine to five. Learning the job isn't where it stops for our youngsters. No. Teaching them the job, teaching them how to work in the hotel is actually the easy bit because they love it and they, they, they love the uniforms, they like, they like the routine, they like everything and they, they do it well and they take to it like ducks to water, they really do the job well. But teaching them how to run their lives, how to feed themselves, how to go to the doctor, how to go out and access entertainment, uh, how take to pay, their medication, pay their bills, all, those sorts of all the sorts of things that you need to maintain your life in order to go to work, those are the skills they're short on. Those you cannot teach in a day college. Students do get time off. They can relax in their lounge. Or they can play cricket in the sunshine. This is Matthew. He's in his first year at Foxes. He's good at cricket, but his mum and dad worry about his low self-esteem. He lacks confidence in himself very, very much. He had some stickers the other day from um, some trainers, and he went and stuck them all over his face in a, on a picture. And I went upstairs and I said, Matthew, why? And he said, oh, because I don't like my face. And I took them off and I said, you've got a lovely face. And uh, I don't think I told you. No. Hey, Matthew! <laughs> I hope he will become less vulnerable, certainly more confident. So consequently, I think it, this is a, um, a grounding for his future. So hopefully, we can't look long term because no one knows what the future holds, but I just hope that he'll start off very happy and continue to do so throughout his life. Do you want a girlfriend, David? Yeah. You better start looking for one, David. Matthew obviously has got learning difficulties, otherwise he wouldn't be here, but in his mind, he hasn't, and he wants to be independent, and we've got to try and explain to him that he wouldn't be here if he was independent. So um, I think he finds it difficult, you know, like he wants a girlfriend, but he doesn't want a girlfriend from Foxes because they've all got learning disabilities. He mm. wants a, you know, normal, if you like, girlfriend. She has blonde hair. She would have earrings. Yeah, and a fit body, shiny teeth. <laughs> How do you look for one? How, how do I look for a girlfriend? Just keep on looking at the club, round town, the co-op, um, near Butlins and the beach. Thank you.
Matthew's search for a non-Fox's girlfriend means many hours wandering the streets of Minehead, eyeing up potential candidates. This can be a lonely calling. Not keen on the look of her. Not keen on that one. Why not? <laughs> Don't look too good. No, <laughs> not my time. She's too short. Mm, no, because she's using a phone. Why is it important to have a girlfriend? Because it's good to have love. <laughs> At the hotel, Sophie has made it to her workplace in the kitchen. You need to go and get a bucket then. No, get off! What would you like to do today, Graham? Bread. Cool soup, make bread. Okay then. Um, and you need one kilo. Okay, so go and get the bread mix. Go on then. See you, idea. Yeah. Get guest plates in, please. We go. Show me where one kilo is on there, then, Sophie, please. Can you show me where one kilo is. Yeah, red one. Red, big red one. Yeah, that's it. Who's left a knife in the sink? Open that. David, you don't leave a knife at any time. It's dangerous. Somebody can cut their hands on it. Right. Look, concentrate. Don't concentrate. They won't be ready in time for lunch, will they? Yeah, and then we've got no bread rolls to put the burgers in. OK, cut down. See, if we get these made, you can tell everybody you made the burger buns. OK, cut down. Give you a race. It's a month since her hiding in the Louis escapade, and Sophie is actually making progress. This is the furthest she's got in the bread-making process. Back the last week, isn't it? The first week she was here, we thought, this one we have not got right. In the, well, it's... So ten months she's been here. I mean, she has changed so much. Well, I but think she changed, changed in the first That's term. Yeah. But you can bet your life, the day that Hold girl up. walks onto the stage at graduation, the year she's leaving, two years' time. She will be different she, again. Yeah, I mean... She, Quite yeah, recognised. No, she has come so far. I mean, if you just do that for one out of, out of 20, you've, you've achieved something. Sophie has a tray full of buns, and her joy is unbridled. <laughs> oh, my God! She's really come on leaps and bounds. I mean, like, she can weigh out a kilo of bread mix, no problem. She can. She, she knows how much liquid to put in. She can do the whole process. So there's no reason why she hadn't done that with bread rolls. She can, can't do that with everything. She does. She's so excitable. She's just getting excited about everything, really, and then like. Oh, gosh, I'll tell you what, she bottled that. <laughs> She's made a fortune, wouldn't she? Right, you want to cook yeah, some things, Sophie? Yes, I am here now. You're here now, thank yes. God for that. Oh. What would we do without you, eh? I don't know. Across town, another house, home to 12 Fox's students. And Dan. Having got nowhere with Michelle at the hotel, he's now cozying up to Julia. He's a bit of a Romeo. He can't help himself. He really can't. That's all part of his personality, isn't it, I suppose? It's a, it's a love for the ladies. Definitely. I just, I can't keep up with him, though. Is any of it real, though? Does it mean any of it? Yeah. He wants to probably marry all of them. And obviously he's very quick to say, <laughs> I love you. But it doesn't end with Julia. When Dan's ex-girlfriend, Cassie, asks for a hug, he's only too eager to oblige. What? Oh. Oh. That's me and Howard. Um, Daniel. Yes. That's a bit more of a friendly hug, isn't it? It's lasted more than... Me? Yes, 
What are you thinking about? <laughs> that girlfriend. What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about me? Is are you thinking about Cassie, Daniel? Uh oh. Uh, He's yeah. smiling. <laughs> what are you thinking about? I think. Cassie. 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 What about Cassie? You want to be with Cassie now? Huh? Yeah, get Cassie. Get you. Get you. Um, boy. Well, what about Julia? Yes. Oops. Um, is, that, is that it? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> short face, Julia. Why? Looks because like Daniel wants short faces. On one level, it all seems quite petty, oh, yeah. but there's the potential for real upset. Oh, yeah. Why didn't you go and apologise to her? Yes, I will. Go on. That's a bit of a shot that, that was. Cause yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, yeah. Oh. yeah. I can see where guys are upset and I know how she feels. So. Yeah, she feels hurt. She probably feels a bit upset. Oh. Because Julia and Cassie have been friends for a long time. They live in each other, they do. So they're real quite upset. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's one of the trickiest aspects of the staff job managing the emotions of their students and teaching them to be careful of other people's feelings. And you and Julia are supposed to be best friends as well. We are. But that's not really how friends, you know, treat each other, is it? Or well, should I even apologise to her? If you feel it's necessary, then yes. Next morning, Dan has had a ticking off. He's been told to leave the girls well alone and to concentrate on his job for the rest of the term. News travels fast at the staff breakfast. I just wondered what was going on with uh, Daniel. Uh, we're not allowed to talk to him at the moment. And he's got a verbal warning. All right, if you're going out with him. OK, Jackie. We're not allowed. Yes, and all the girls in our house are not allowed to go out with them. No. Nope. So that's means a little bit down in the dumps, is he? Yes, but... Yes, she is. It's been a long, hot summer at Fox's. The end of term is in sight and the students have a ballroom to decorate for their graduation party. Every year, 16 or so students graduate from Foxes. Three quarters of them will go on to find jobs, but this can take up to a year to achieve. The struggle the parents have to get this to happen, it's not actually the um, fact that the students can't do it. It's the fact that they have to rely on an overloaded social services department. Uh, nothing is coordinated. But for those that do, um, their life is changed forever. I mean, they've joined society, they feel a part of it. Their self-esteem just goes up and up and up, doesn't it? And, you know, they, they have brilliant lives, brilliant lives, and as they deserve to have. At Fox's Earth, Matt and Tash are preparing Matt's outfit for the graduation party. Oh, poo, just yeah. put it on the table, Matt. Quick, go and get a paper towel. Oh, 
Have a towel. Quick! Sure. And a cloth. Well done. Quick! Run! Matt, other way, other way. <laughs> oh my god, run other Quick! I will. Run! Gonna stay! Quick! Faster! Tash has a plan for the lonely man of Fox's Academy. Yeah. Okay. And you know, tomorrow night, yeah. there might be someone there that you might like. Yeah. Yeah? She used to go to Fox's, so... Did she? Yeah. What, member of Star? No, she's an ex-student. <laughs> it was a few years ago. I think you'll like her. Yeah. Would you like to meet her? Yes, I would. You can't act all shy, though. I'm <laughs> Yeah? What does she look like? Um... She's got red hair with blonde bits in it. Yeah. Um, freckles. Oh, yeah. Not too many, just a few. Oh, yeah. Does she wear earrings? Does she wear earrings? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. You don't think so? Why, do you want her to wear earrings? No, it's up to her. <laughs> it's going to be funny. It's the end of another year at Fox's Academy and the students are getting ready to go home. Sophie's mum and dad have come to collect her. Their daughter is finishing her first year on a high and they're keen to see her progress. Hi, 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 baby. Hi, darling. You well? All right. Yeah, I'm fine. What we're desperate to do is wean her off us because we're not going to be around forever. And so emotionally, I want to be independent from us. So it's only been a year that people have said, oh, her speech has come on so much better. Um, and she's much calmer because she... This is, this is calmer for her. <laughs> she's very excited. Yes, yes. But that she, I mean, and, uh, yeah, she's been, and she's been shaking hands more and, yeah, and um, in, in interacting in conversations a lot more. That's the big thing, because she tends to talk at you and not listen when you talk back. So, but she's, she's been... Much more sociable, hasn't she, yeah. in that respect? They have healthy eating and, oh, yeah. and that sort she's of thing. Lost and she's weight. lost yeah. quite a lot of weight. And, mm. and we've noticed a difference with her walking, mm. in so much that if we want to go out for a walk, we used to almost have to drag Sophie along with us, whereas now she'll charge yeah. on with us and go on ahead, you know. Every year ends with the graduation ceremony at the local theatre. Everyone attends to see the final year off and there's a real feeling of expectancy. There's a prize on offer for the highest achieving first year as well. Well, let me welcome you once again to Fox's graduation, and I'll try and get it right this year, 2006. <laughs> this year we've got a very, very big programme as we have accumulated far more certificates for our students than ever before. So Standing I, up on the stage um, at graduation um, is quite touching for me because as we're handing out the awards, you see that person years ago and there is no comparison at all. The next awards to Ben Shaxton. Yeah. You see them grow up learn to communicate better, um, be more sociable. They learn here to think as a team, to actually care about what happens to the others. And the most important thing they learn other than that is the work ethos. You've got to look good, you've got to sound good, you've got to work quickly, because in catering, you can't drag your heels. And I think that is the difference between learning in a real environment like this and learning in a classroom or in a college setting because it isn't real. Now, every year we always present um, a cup to the best newcomer. The cup is given to the student who has, who has changed the most inside a year. It doesn't matter if you can't succeed. The hardest thing, the best thing is to just try. You never know what you'll achieve. The winner this year is Matthew Massey. <laughs> This Definitely. last year mm. at Foxes, it's made um, leaps and bounds yeah. for this progress. Yeah. And I think a lot of it as well is because he's been treated like an adult, because he's in college and not treated as a child. Um, and I think that's made a big difference to him. Big difference. Yeah. So we're very proud of him. 
After the award ceremony, there's the fancy dress Barbie and ball. This year, it's appropriately enough an undersea theme. So there's Neptunes and there's mermaids. Fresh from his triumph as first year student of the year, Matthew is keeping a lookout for his date. Tash has lined up a meeting with a former Fox's student who's now working in a local hospital. Well, Dan's Jolly Roger is flying at half mast. He's been warned off the girls till next term. It's one of Minehead's more colourful events, where everyone makes an effort, including Tash, who's playing Cupid. For the lonely man of Minehead, the year looks like ending on a high. She's nice. What, like, what about, what about those? She hasn't, she hasn't got any earrings. <laughs> That's okay. But she says she might have them pierced. Did she? What about the long blonde hair thing? She can grow it. She can grow it? <laughs> On diet blonde? Yeah. Go and ask her, say, Claire, you're going to dance with me later. <laughs> Hello again. Hello. Hello. Will you dance with me later? Yeah. What? Dance with me later? Okay. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> After the Barbie, the bash. Foxes has, so far, trained over 140 students. Their three years in Minehead give them invaluable experience in the hotel trade. But perhaps more important are the lessons about how to live your life as independently as you can and the confidence which students pick up at Fox's. Sometimes the lessons are hard learned. But with a bit of application, they've usually got happy endings. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, yeah. What do you say now, punk? Speak.